Now, when you realize how important the role of women are as helpers of God's body, it can create something powerful that is different from men. Remember this. I'm going to repeat this over and over again. God has blessed you women that could not be put under a doormat. He gave you something that men cannot do. And I mean cannot do no matter how hard they try. Even scientists, they're still trying to do this, but they can't do it. You know what it is? The first one of the things that you women have is you create life. Men can't do it. Men cannot create life. Look at the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. Genesis chapter 3 verse 20. You man can't do it no matter how hard you try. That's what homosexuals do, right? They recruit. They don't reproduce. Amen. See, no matter how many, you can get surgery to become a woman. You men can get surgery to become some transvestite and become a woman. But I'll tell you one thing, you can never produce life. That's right. You can never produce life. That is something that God has given to you women that you shouldn't be upset and get sad and say, no, I'm actually a man deep down inside. And then you get surgery and you become a man and then become some sort of lesbian. No, that's not. No, no, no. Okay. You violate and reject the gift God has given to you. You know what you can do? You create life. You create life. That's why the church keeps reproducing more children. And the whole body of Christ, the church, the Bible puts it as a woman. The woman is a church that produces life. Now look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says right here, And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because what? She was the mother of all living. Here's another thing you women can do. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. You know who's the first, first law that men and women, everyone, all of life, all humans, you know who's the first law we learn? It's not government. It's the mother. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1. First law is from a woman. Look at Proverbs chapter 1, and we will read verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the what? Law of thy mother. Now notice right here that with the women right here, Proverbs 1, 8, Proverbs 1, 8 right here. Who's the law right here? Is it the government or is it the mother? Now, when children grow up, do you think the first thing they'll learn is from schools, brainwashed liberal schools, from the news media, from the government, from fellow children, or is it the mama? Right here. Law. You're the first law. You know how John Wesley became a, one of the holiest men who ever lived? His mother gave the first law. Do you know why great men of God throughout history became great men and became great preachers and teachers of the word, it's because someone raised them right. You know why Hudson Taylor became the missionary in China and stirred the pot? That even some communists there who took over got saved from Hudson Taylor's work? The prayers of his mother. There are the first law, that's why you mothers have something important that Satan wants to take over. What has Satan done to destroy this rule? He has done this. What has Satan done to destroy this power that you women have? He has done this. Uh, there we go. Where you, become a, where you become a different thing, okay? So that you, here's another thing. What does the devil want to do? He does this, right? School provides the law what to brainwash their children. What does he do? He does this, tells them something that's not actually real. What does he do? It's this. Why do communist governments always aim for the children? Why do liberal activists and homosexuals aim for the children, the children, the children? They're the ones who will take the votes. They're the ones who are going to take over the world. They're the ones who are going to make a difference. See, the thing is, is that there's something the Lord has blessed you with that God has not given to others, and Satan is trying to ruin this at the beginning. Here's another thing right here, what the Lord has done to bless your life. Let's also look at Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Do you know who were the first witnesses of Christ's resurrection? 
It was not men. It was women. Look at Matthew chapter 28. God has blessed you women with some things throughout history and in the word of God that other people were not able to do. Look at Matthew chapter 28. And we will read verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And then verse 5, the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that he seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples. Notice right here, the first witnesses of the resurrection were, was not the chief of Christianity, Simon Peter. It was not the 11 apostles. It was women. It was women. They were the first witnesses of the resurrection. Also look at Romans 16, 1. Romans chapter 16, verse 1. There's something with you women that the Lord has given you something throughout the Bible and even in this life that he did not give to other people. So we see right here first witnesses of the resurrection. Why not the 11 apostles first? Why is it the women? There's something the Lord sees in you. Another thing right here is to serve the ministry. Now, there are some women who say, well, you know, Pastor, uh, throughout your teachings, uh, I'm, I'm single and I'm not married, and it seems like the Lord, He doesn't want me married in my life. Are you telling me that I have to be married and be a mother, etc.? No. He, here are some things you'll notice that the Lord has given to you women that it does not have to take the role of a wife and mother all the time. In, as a matter of fact, this one is a powerful one. Look at Romans 16.1. <clears throat> I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a what? Servant of the church, which is at Sincrea. Now, modern Bibles, what they would like to do is that they would like to switch that to deacon of the church. But no, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says servant. Do you know why? Because remember, the overall role of a woman, which we will look, look at, uh, will eventually look, is Proverbs 31. But the overall role of everything that the Lord has given you with in attributes and, and blessed you in life, this is the overall role you'll see, the overall role. And what you can do is, this is a big blessing. If you can't support the man, so remember, the woman is made from the body of man, right? Isn't it more of an honor to support and serve the body of Christ? Isn't that a better man to support and serve? Amen? So here's the thing. I mean, well, I don't have a man in my life to support. And Look at this. You got Jesus Christ. That's the greatest man who ever lived. Amen. The body of Christ. You make up of his body. And the church is what? His wife. Church is his wife. So I'll tell you something. That's even a higher calling to serve then. See that? So don't be discouraged about, I don't have a family, I don't have children, I, I don't have a man in my life. Well, look at this, man. You got Jesus Christ. What do you mean you don't have a man in your life? He's been in your life ever since you got saved. He's been in your heart ever since from beginning to end when you got born again. Look at this one. This is a greater calling. And I'm going to tell you something. This is, trust me, when women support the ministry, it really changes. I mean this, it changes the atmosphere of the church. It does that. For example, okay, it does change the atmosphere of the church when I don't see food on that table. <laughs> you know why? Because we had some women in the church who actually mentioned about bringing something right here. Here's another thing. You know how, so you know how my church started? It started with two women, you got to understand. Didn't you know that? This church would not exist had it not been for two women. So I had Sister Iris Lee and Sister Kathy Lee with her family. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have started this church. Maybe that's why the Lord used these women as the first witnesses of resurrection. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. Yonggi Cho, he's the world's largest church. The world's largest church. He boasts 700,000 to a million, actually, Yonggi Cho. But you might say, well, 
Pastor, he must be an apostate with that many. You're right, he is an apostate. A wicked man. He got in prison, actually. But here's the thing. You know how he grew his church? He said women. That was his secret. He said that women, because remember, I showed you in a different video. There is something in you that you have with the words, right? Word of a woman. Remember, in 1 Peter 3, I showed you, if you can't win them with the word of God, you can use them with the word and conversation of women. So that's really powerful, what you have. Yonggi Cho realized that when women talk, there was something. And then he realized that it's going to spread the news. It's going to get people to come into church. And guess what? It really worked. It really worked. That's why he became humongous. And I mean humongous, you got to understand. Now, women, what are you using your mouth for? <clears throat> are you using your mouth to get people into church? To show people how to get saved? Or, as 1 Timothy chapter 5, which we looked at the first video, tattlers and busybodies that the Satan takes advantage of. Or spewing out the mouth that would support this role right here. See, what are you using your mouth for? Are you using it for seduction? What are you using it for? There's power here that can go two sides. It can be a power that can be used for evil or a power that can be used for good. That should not be underestimated. Not only that, look at Acts 16. Acts 16. Acts 16. So I mentioned about serving the ministry. And also it can even be starting a church. And I mentioned a little bit about that before. But let me give you a verse on this one now. Look at Acts chapter 16. And we will read verse 13. The Bible says, And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the woman which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And there she constrained us. Now notice right here that Paul started, now this is interesting, okay? This is something really interesting here. Paul started the church with a woman named Lydia. Do you know what church that was? Look at verse 12. It was near the region of what? Philippi. Now, don't underestimate your role. Don't underestimate your role. There's something powerful in that. So in right here, you see how important your role is as women and what God can use you for. The last one is actually Judges 4, but uh, we won't turn there for time's sake. But here's something else you can do. Now, I don't want uh, people to misunderstand me here, so have some grace. You've got to have grace here, okay? Women, they are supporters, right? And they've always supported men throughout the beginning of the Bible till now, right? So here's the thing. What happens when men fail to take the leadership authority, when men fail to take the stance? What's the women's job? To support it, right? That's why it makes sense why the Lord raised up Deborah at Judges 4. You know why? Because a male general, a general of the army, backed out and he said, I'm not going to battle unless you go with me, Deborah. And then Deborah told him, well, because you did that, the honor of killing General Sisera will go to a woman, not to you. Why did God raise up Deborah? Because men were losing their role. Men fail to take a stand. And women, because it's your job to support, what do you do? You fill in. You fill in the role. If there is no man to take a stand, what are you going to do? If your husband can't raise your children right, what are you women going to do? And you're going to have to do it for him. Here's the thing, see? So that's why I'm being very careful when I say this. I believe this. The Lord... Men's job is to be the role in charge of the ministry. But here's something. 
Women are the supporters of the ministry when men fail in that role. That's the gist of the message. Not that they're leaders or etc., but rather that they are supporters that have to fill in the role when men fail in being a leader. So, I mean, you got to realize this. Proverbs 31, if you read the whole chapter, which we won't turn to for time's sake, King Solomon, you know how many women he had? He had like a thousand women. But it's very interesting when you read the book of Proverbs 31, you know what Solomon said? Beauty is vain. And he also said one woman is far more valuable above rubies. Do you know why he said that? Because this is what Satan wants also. Is Remember at, at my first video, what did I tell you what Satan wants to take advantage of? He wants to take advantage of your uh, sexuality and he wants to take advantage of your word, your mouth. I showed you in my first video. And you know what? It was through the mouth of his wives that caused the most powerful king of Israel to fall into idolatry. It crushed the whole Israel nation because the mouth of women. Nehemiah 13, when you read that, what did Nehemiah say? Even the great Solomon, who had, he had all the wisdom. So he could probably out-talk out -talk his wives. He had all the knowledge. He had all the power. But even him, women caused him to sin. Samson, strongest man ever. It was because of a woman that he fell. See, women have some sort... This is something Satan wants to take advantage of. And it's through your sexuality as well, right? Why did Solomon marry the women? Because they were very beautiful. They were very alluring. But what did he whine at Ecclesiastes? He whined about, I had all the women and pleasure, and it's all vanity, vanity, vanity. Just one woman is enough. So he realized that these, uh, that these two things are not that important anymore. Proverbs 31, read everything in that chapter about a woman. And that's the most famous chapter all Bible-believing women learn from and mark down. And I would mark it down if I were you. If I'm a woman, I'd read that as a daily Bible reading, Proverbs 31. The Proverbs 31 woman, it mentions all the role of everything that she works hard in. But you know what the common gist is in everything she does? It's this one. Supporting, supporting, supporting. That's why people rise up and call her blessed and think she's the greatest. And Solomon, he coveted that. That's what he wanted, but it took him a long time for him to finally realize that. But what does Satan want you women to do? Run this. And that's why uh, throughout our world, women have such power that run this ca that can be used for evil right here. And what does, God, uh, what does Satan want? He wants this out of women. Look at the dressing today becoming more and more like this. Satan, he doesn't want you to become this woman right here, Proverbs 31. Amen. He wants to violate everything of this, and he wants you to violate everything of this. That's what he wants to do. So never, never underestimate and take for granted your role, women. It is a blessed gift and a blessing the Lord has blessed you with. It's a powerful role. And I've talked so much about women right here. I never talked about women that much in all my life. And there are more, more videos on women, actually, that I, that I want to do. There, there is so much important information for you women out there. And Satan, he always violates that. That's why, I mean, this stuff, there's something with the conspiracies, there's something with end times that Satan has raised up so that uh, he can... Uh, overpower and ruin the role of women. He raised up Hollywood for that reason. Why? To produce sexuality. Well, he raised up liberal schools. Why? To brainwash the children. He, so that, why? Because mothers are supposed to be the law when children are first born. He raised up abortion. And some of these elites try to promote this. Why? Because he wants to ruin life. Satan has raised up in the end times this kind of allure. Why? So Genesis 6, Revelation 12, and Daniel 2, he can intermingle once more and repeat the same perverted nonsense back at Genesis 6 with intermingling. 
Satan, what does he want to do? He wants women to become, to covet the role of men, the authority, the leadership position, to do this rather than what? The supporter, the supporter. Because he realized that women are so important and have a gift where when they, remember the aspects of a woman that you women share with God? He wants you to ignore those parts that support the supporting role. He wants someone to mouth out, mouth out, let's take charge, I will do this, let's take charge, I will do this. And we get so many people, Bible believers, doing that. But how many Bible believers do we have supporting and keep them pushing? We have men speaking up and saying, let's fight, let's do this, but we don't have supporters. And that's why pastors and missionaries drop and drop and drop. People leave the church because there is no supporter. The supporter is the one that keeps the ministry ongoing. The leadership is the one that takes charge and do something about it. Ruin the combination. You ruin the combination. Go ahead. And it will fulfill his new world order plan, what Satan's going to uh, create one day at the end. And that's what he wants to make.